This is a demo of a new feature that I'm adding to machine learning for kids. Um, I'm going to start with some context, but I'll keep it brief because if you're watching this, you almost certainly already know it. Um, machine learning for kids, it's a platform for teaching children about artificial intelligence and machine learning by giving them a simple platform for uh, training machine learning models. They can choose what they want their projects to be about. They can collect their own training data and they can use uh, the training data they create to train their own custom models. Um, they can train a variety of types of machine learning model. Um, so they can train models to recognize uh, text or images or sound recordings or sets of numbers. And then once they've uh, trained their own model, this is integrated for them um, with a few different environments. So they can make something with it, like Scratch, where the model shows up as a new set of code blocks. And then by doing this, by making something with the machine learning model that they've trained themselves and seeing what's involved, um, they learn a lot about machine learning. They Just what machine learning is, the idea of training a computer, they learn how this technology behaves, like the difference that the amount of training data makes or how imbalanced training data will bias the answers that the model gives. So what I've found is that going through these projects has been a really great jumping off point for learning about what AI is and the impact that these technologies have on all of our lives. But what I want to do more with um, in the site, in the tool, is explain what happens under the covers, how these technologies actually work. Uh, and that brings me to the new feature that I'm working on. So actually for this demo, a quick bit of context. So I'm using this project. It's based on like smart assistants. Um, something where the students train a model to understand a few different commands. Um, so they can give it a command like, um, can we get some air in here? And it will turn on the fan. Um, or they can ask it, um, it's very dark, we can't see. And it turns on the light. So, and they do this by creating a few different buckets um, for the three different commands they want it to recognize. And then they type in the examples of how they would give that command. So they train a text classifier to recognize the meaning of three different commands. So finally to the new bit then. So the new section is here. When they train the model, there's an extra button to describe how that model was trained. And in this, I'm trying to give a bit of an introduction to how the model that they trained was actually created under the covers. So the type of machine learning model they're training is a neural network. So basically what I've got here is a step-by-step -step explanation of what a neural network is. Now this isn't an accurate uh, visualization of their actual model, that would be way too complicated. So what I'm doing is showing them a visualization that will have enough elements in common with their actual model um, so that I can explain the idea. So. Um, this is a very traditional neural network diagram. The model is made up of these nodes shown as circles that are arranged in layers. And as it says here, models with a lot of layers, um, we describe them as deep. And deep models can give better results, but they will take longer to train. Next, we step through the model. And instead of trying to do this as like an abstract thing, uh, I'm doing it with one of their training examples. So this is something that they will have typed into one of their training buckets. So to use this to train the model, um, first this text needs to be turned into a set of numbers. Now there are lots of different ways you can do this. Uh, and if you're building your own model, you need to choose a method that is a good fit for your project. So quick aside, the Machine Learning for Kids site is used by children spanning a really wide range of ages. So I'm trying to strike a balance in how I explain things. Um, and what I've gone with is this section on the left um, here I'm going to explain the ideas as simply as I can without using any jargon or technical terms. For older children who can handle a bit more detail, um, I've got this section at the right. And here I give them the technical term for what this page is about, with the idea being that they can use that as a jumping off point for more background reading. And the text in this jargon panel is a customized link that helps get them started finding out more on that topic. But anyway, um, back to the wizard step. Uh, so the first step is turning their input text into numbers. And like I said, there are lots of ways of doing that. Um, one way is to count the number of times each word, uh, each type of word shows up. So in this training example, um, it had the word can once and the word we once. 
um, and so on. And again, this isn't hard-coded uh, abstract visualization. The words shown in the nodes, even in these nodes uh, with zeros, these are the words that uh, were the most common in all of their training examples for this project. So they'll recognize typing these words in um, most frequently. And again, for students who want to know more um, about the technique, in this case, it's bag of words, um, they can click on the link and find out more from there. There's lots of other things that you can count. So here I'm giving them a few trivial examples like the number of letters, uh, the use of punctuation, um, the use of emoticons or contractions and so on. Now what is useful to count kind of depends on the project, um, you know, because these are going to be the features that the model is going to be able to learn to recognize patterns in. But this general idea of counting things as features, there are limitations with this because you're not giving the model a chance to learn anything about the order of the words. Now the technique that was used for the model that the students actually trained does represent sequences of words. So the order of words is actually captured for the projects that they do. Now how this works is a bit complex to get into. So I've left a link for more info for students who want to know more about this. But for everyone else, the point is just the first thing that happens to the input text is it needs to be turned into a series of numbers. Next, these numbers are used in sums that calculate the values for the nodes in the next layer along. Now these connecting lines um, show which input values are used in the calculations of which of the values in the nodes in the next layer. Now there are lots of different types of sum that you can use for this. And you can see here, I sort of give them a placeholder um, for the kind of sums you can do, adding up all the uh, input values. So I've got the four and one and five and five uh, and so on. Now, if you're building your own machine learning model, you have to choose the function, the equation, you know, what type of sum you're going to use for each node. Um, but this is kind of just giving them an idea uh, that it is a function involving the values from the input layer. Now, there's also going to be, for each of the connecting line in the diagram, there's going to be a number associated with it that we use in the sum as well. So again, you can sort of see the line uh, here has the number four, so that's four times four, and one times one, and five times three, five times one, and so on uh, as we go through. Um, each of the nodes also has a number associated with it, and we can use that in the sum as well. So you can see here I've got the 5 from this node here, 5 plus 4 times 4, and 1 times 1, and so on, and so on. So the answer for all of this, if you work it out, is 52. Now this is actually a really common function for simple projects, each input value multiplied by a weight for the line that connected it, and all of this is added together with a bias value for the node. So the student is shown a few examples like this to help them get the idea. Um, different bias value for each node, different weight values for each of the lines that connect it. And if they're building their own machine learning model, sort of they're reminded that they're gonna be the ones who would have had to choose how many layers they want in their model and how many nodes to put in each of the layers and what functions they're gonna use in each of those nodes. And again, remembering that each of the nodes in the model can use different equations. This then continues um, through the rest of the model, uh, through all the sort of nodes in the middle there until we reach the final layer. And the final layer has the output, the prediction that the model has produced for this training output. Now again, this is customized to match their project. So there are three nodes in the output layer because they had three buckets of training data in this project. And then the output from this model is uh, compared with the correct answer, the correct answer being which of the training buckets this training example came from. So this training example came, uh, which was the, can we get some air in here please, came from the fan on bucket. So the correct answer should have been 100% for, tra uh, for, um, for fan on and zero for lamp on and music on. Now just quickly, um, I know that this is more traditionally described as being a decimal number between zero and one, but throughout the rest of the site and in the scratch blocks, I refer to confidence scores as percentages. So I've decided to stick with that here just to keep things consistent and not confuse matters. But what this leaves us with is an error rate that we're sort of 84 uh, lower than it should have been for fan on, 42 higher than it should have been for lamp on uh, and for music on. Now this error rate is then used uh, to go backwards through the layers. Um, it's used to nudge the numbers for each of the lines and each of the values. You can see here that changes there, that changed, uh, that changed and so on. Um, 
it's nudging the weight and bias numbers, increasing a little bit or decreasing a little bit, depending on what would have made that final error rate a bit smaller. So they get to watch, you know, just this idea of nudging, going backwards through the layers until we reach the start again. And then when we, once we reach the start, we do that all over again, but with another training example. And again, this is another training example the student will have put into one of their training buckets. This is something they'll remember having typed in. And now we're going to go through again, but with an updated set of numbers through the rest of the model. So first, remember, it's the first thing to do is to turn the text into a series of numbers. And again, this can be done by counting things, either words or different features about the text. Um, or there are more complicated ways to do it if the order of words is important. We do a sum for each of the nodes that are in the middle of the model here. And uh, the sums for these nodes use the values from the inputs. They use the values for the lines that connect them. Uh, and they use the value for the node itself. And then we carry on doing that um, through the rest of the layers in the model. And then when we reach the output layer, we get the prediction for this training example. Uh, and and again, remember there's a separate output node for each of the training buckets that they created in the project. So this would be different depending on the kind of project the student had made. These outputs are then compared with the right answer to give us the error rate. That error rate telling us how well the machine learning model is doing at this stage of the training. And then this uh, error rate is used to go backwards through the model, again, nudging the, the values for the weights, for the lines and the nodes increasing them a little bit or decreasing them a little bit, depending on what would have made that final error smaller. And this is how the training is working out what's the best number to use for each of the nodes and for each of the lines. Now, the more training examples we have, the more opportunities we have to nudge the weights and bias values until they are uh, resulting in predictions that are good enough. Um, and again, these are all examples that the student will have typed in and they get to see the sort of animation play out going forwards and backwards, forwards and backwards, each time uh, tweaking the, the values for the nodes or for the lines. And we can go through the entire set of training examples that they uh, collected more than once because the first time through the predictions will likely be pretty bad as they will see happening uh, in these examples. But then once you've run every training example through, um, the model values will have been nudged so many times that on the second run, it starts, uh, it starts from a much better place. So it starts to give better answers. And that's it. A hopefully simple introduction to the concepts of what a neural network is and how it's trained that is customized based on the project the student has made and seen working for themselves. And finally, I finish off with a link to a video that does what I think is a really good job of explaining the intuition for why all these endless tweakings of weights and bias values can end up producing something that gives the right answer.